Uh, okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Junjie Tai. Uh, you can call me Jack if that's easier. Um, so I am the uh, Bluemix runtime ar architect. Uh, for those who does not know Bluemix, this is the IBM's uh, cloud application platform. The topic I'm going to talk about today is uh, the ten common errors that when you know that can happen when you push an application to Cloud Foundry. So our uh, I'm going to categorize uh, these errors into four different uh, types, uh, and based on what happens, you know, behind the scene when application is pushed. So there are client-side errors, fabric-level errors, or uh, that errors happen during application staging, and finally when application is actually getting started. So first, um, let's take a look at you know what ha actually happens when the application is pushed to Cloud Foundry. I guess this diagram is probably already uh, familiar to many of you, uh, but you know, as you can see, uh, there are lots of things going on when you do a CF push. Um, the cloud controller are needed to talk to multiple components in order to complete the request. And as you can imagine, any step of those can fail, and thus calling the final failure of your application push. So this is how I categorize the different types of errors that can happen. The first type of errors are the client-side errors. So this happens when your client tries to talk to the cloud controller uh, in the cloud. And then the second level of error is fabric level errors. So as I mentioned, there are many cloud uh, components involved in order to stand up the application. So like the cloud controller, there's database behind it, there's a blob store, there's the EA, and of course there's net messaging bus, you know, or between all these components. So if anything goes wrong there, you will get an error too, or, and we'll see how we deal with those. Um, then the third type of errors is the application or staging errors. So this usually has something to do with the build packs. And then the final step is when everything is, you know, created, your job is ready, and uh, the DA is are preparing, to, preparing to start your application, something goes wrong. So that, that's the application startup errors. So I'm going through all these type of errors, and talking about the possible causes and the solutions. All right, so first, uh, let's start with the simple ones, our client-side errors. Number one, are, it's not really errors, but you know some of the best practices that you should follow before you start. Uh, so, number one, uh, make sure that you have the right privilege in the space that you are pushing your applica application to. You need to have the developer role in order to do that. Number two is that uh, make sure that you have a right version of your client tool, like the CF command line tool, uh, when you work with a remote cloud. Uh, the, the client tool is evolving you know, very fast. Uh, make sure that you have the, all the defect fix that you need. Um, number three is that make sure that you're pushing from the right fo folder, right? Or sometimes you just, you know, hurry to get started and uh, forgot to uh, specify the package that you want to, really want to push, and then the command line tool will try to upload the, your whole current folder to the cloud, which is probably not your application. Finally is that uh, make sure that you are picking up a right manifest file, uh, because we know that the, the, the command line tool will use uh, that manifest file in the current folder, and um, many times if you are working with a sample, you know some some other people's application, they comes with a manifest file in their root folder, and it specifies many options. So if you don't intend to use that manifest file, rename it or just remove it. All right, so we are ready to go. Uh, the second error is also obvious. Our the route is already in use. So as you probably already learned from the last session, you need to provide a unique name for your application uh, to create the, host, the URL for your application, right? So uh, make sure that it's not in use by others. Otherwise, you may need to you know, uh, change it to another one using that option, and option. Or of course, you, if your application does not have to be served from a URL, you can use the no route option. Or you, if you don't care, you can use the random option. Our next error, also a very simple one, is where you 
start to exceed your organization or all your space's memory limit. So as you know, each organizational space in Cloud Foundry has a memory quota. So if you already pushed your, you know, like 10 applications and they use uh, all the memories that's allocated to your organization, then your next push will fail. So make sure that you have enough memory to work with. Um, next error is also obvious. So, you know, besides memories, our disk is also our, our constrained resource. So the default uh, that, that you can request is one gigabyte. Uh, so unless your cloud provider changes that default, uh, you cannot request more than that. So if you specify, you know, the, the, through the K option, like two gigabyte, uh, two gigabyte disk for your application, the push will also fail. All right, so these are the simple ones to start with. Now let's to move to another slightly more complex our errors. Um, so if you are working with a command line tool, sometimes you will see this, right? You, you do a push, start to uploading your application files, and uh, after a while, it reports an error. So this means the application file upload failed. Or possible cause one, of course, network could go wrong. So make sure that you have fast enough network to work with, um, and uh, um, you know, uh, make sure that uh, the, the network connectivity is right. But there could be other causes, or uh, and one of the usual uh, situations that your application is really, really large, right? So we need to understand there are two limits here. One is the our uh, application upload time. There is a by default 15 minutes um, limitation there. So if your application takes more than that to upload, it will fail. Also, there is a size default, which is one gigabyte limit. So uh, if you, you know, cannot uh, complete the upload within these two limitations, consider these options. First one is to exclude unnecessary files from your application. Uh, you can use that .cfignore file to specify what files you don't want to push from your current uh, folder. Um, and most of the time, you know, uh, you really don't have to include all those files, right? So for example, if you are pushing a Node.js application, you don't have to push all the Node module dependencies of, of your application because the build pack will provision those dependencies during the uh, staging time. Um, then the other option to consider is that you know if you really have to include those dependencies, or uh, thinking of another way, instead of putting them into your application, put them into the build pack. So you can create a custom build pack to contain those dependencies, and when during staging, you know install those dependencies to your application. That way, you don't have to include them in your application package. Um, and lastly, you know a very special trick is that. You can keep pushing for several times because the CF command line is uh, pretty smart. So every time she, it will try to push a delta. So you know, by repeating this task every time, you push a little more files to your cloud. So that way, eventually, you may you know succeed to upload all your files, right? So you get push two files each time. Then you know, if you have ten larger files, or uh, five times later, you push them all. But um, it's just kind of tricky. So uh, now let's move to the next type of errors, which I call fabric level errors. Uh, this is where you will see weird messages like you know 500, 400, and uh, with some error codes that you you do not understand. Um, so really, if you look at this diagram, you know every step of those uh, flow can fail. Uh, the database might be down. The blob store might be four. We may run out of DAs, etc. Right? So, uh, to find out which step really fails, I think one of the uh, technique here is to turn on the CF underscore trace variable, so that you can see all the restful communications between your client and the cloud controller, and you will see exactly which step actually fails. That will give you some indication on whether it, it fails when the application metadata is, you know, created. Or when the application droplet is, you know, being created, etc. Right. So, uh, essentially, if you really think this is a fabric level error, there's mu not much you can do, right? Uh, you know, uh, you you can talk to your cloud provider to see uh, whether they can look into the fabric component errors, like the DEA logs or the cloud control logs, to really find what's going on there. 
OK. So now let's talk about uh, the third type of errors, which I call as application staging errors. Uh, and the first, the first category has something to do with the build pack. Um, so number seven is uh, when you specify an invalid build pack name or URL when you push with, a, with the B option. So make sure you have the right build pack name and make sure you have the right URL. Sometimes if you use a wrong, you know, um, wrong type of URL, uh, the message is not very helpful, like the one on the left side. You just see, okay, it's cloning, and that's then failed. So you have no clue to tell why it failed. So make sure you know, you, you, the cloud actually can reach to the build pack URL that you specified, right? Especially when your URL is inside your enterprise firewall, it's not going to work if you are pushing it to a public cloud. Um, so if you don't specify the build pack, then the cloud will try to detect the application type by invoking all the detect method of the install the build pack until some build pack raises its hand and say, OK, yes, I, I, I'm going to stage it. Right? But sometimes you will see this message, you know, no build pack exists right, to actually stage your application. So why does that happen? First, maybe your application package is simply wrong, and there no build pack can actually recognize it. So one of the common errors here is that uh, many users create application packages with a root folder inside the zip, which is not required. The, most of build packs expect the application files to actually exist in the root folder instead of you know, one, you know, one level inside uh, another folder. So make sure you are not doing that. Second is that, again, push from the right directory if you are not specifying the package explicitly. Um, number three is that uh, make sure the required build pack is actually installed in your cloud, right? You can do self build packs to list all the installed build packs and see, uh, for example, if you are pushing a PHP application, make sure the PHP build pack is actually installed. Uh, lastly, um, a very tricky one uh, is that if there is an Debug is a, uh, if there is a bug in the build pack detect method, which modifies the application files, that could that could cause some uh, unpredictable errors because it changes the application files and then all the build packs code afterwards are not getting the original application package, right? So that actually happened with my team in, at some point. So uh, make sure the build pack is doing the right thing when it do, does the detect. So uh, after a build pack is correctly formed and uh, detected, so the next thing the build pack do is to actually compile your application. So error number nine is a very big error. Uh, there are many causes, uh, but the message is simple. You know, you get from the command line tells you application stage failed, um, and that's it. So what do we do? Um, turn on traces if the build pack has that support. So I listed some build packs that does have those support. Java and Liberty build pack has that JPB log uh, level you, that you can set to debug. Um, and then our Node.js build pack, if you want to see more NPM messages, or you can actually use that NPM configure XYZ environment variable to set various configurations. Or you can use that NP NPM RC file to include in your application package, right? You can specify the log level to silly to see all those NPM very detailed log messages. Uh, the new PHP build pack also has the uh, uh, BPD bug um, that you can enable. And then once you enable all those log messages, uh, read the logs. Uh, you can do it in two ways. You can query the, query the recent logs by using that uh, first command, or you can read the logs continuously what you can do is that you have one window to push the application and then have the other window to read the logs. So it's like the, the tail of the log kind of uh, experience. So once you have some logs, then we can look into what might be the course. Course number one, are, it's all your fault again. Do you have the wrong, do, do you have the wrong application package? Or, so for example, if you are pushing a Node.js application, your package.json needed to have the right syntax, right? If it's bad, then the build pack will fail to read it. Um, so that's number one course. Um, number two is that the build pack is 
you know, is unable to reach external dependencies during staging. Uh, many build packs will download external dependencies when they try to stage your application. So like for, again, again for Node.js application, it will talk to the NPM repository to download the modules, you know, claimed by your uh, package.json. So make sure that the, the, the servers, the cloud, has the connection to those dependencies, right? And if there's the security group setting can uh, impact this because it set up some network rules. So make sure the security group rules is not bending uh, the connection to those dependencies. Course number three um, is that staging timeout. Um, again, just like you know, when you up do the upload, staging also has a timeout, which by default is 15 minutes. Um, and that's the maximum. You can use a T option uh, to, to specify this timeout. By default, it's 60 uh, seconds, but you can increase it up to uh, three, three minutes, but that's what you have. So make sure that you are not spending too much time in staging. Um, if, if you have to, then you need to customize the build pack, right? Do less time consuming things during staging. Um, Course number four is staging uses too much memory. So I guess some of you know that you know, staging actually also hap happens inside a wooden container, just like the application is running, right? The wooden container has a memory limitation and a disk limitation. You cannot go beyond that. If you go beyond the memory limitation, sorry, you will get killed silently and suddenly. So. If you experience this, you know, you push several times and die at different time points without, you know, much or uh, indication, you may guess, okay, maybe I'm killed because I'm consuming too much memory. And disk, similarly, and, but the nicest thing with disk is that you won't get killed. You just won't be able to write to disk anymore. So when that happens, the build pack will spit different uh, um, error messages depending on how it's, you know, how it's writing to the disk, right? Um, so again, um, make sure that's not happening. Course number six um, is that when you are using an unmatching build pack or level. So many of the tutorial or samples out there in the net, uh, when they tell you how to do the push, they always push using the master branch of the build pack. Uh, personally, I don't think that's a good idea because that means you are using build pack code that's still in development status. Instead, what you really want to do is to specify a released version of the build pack, like what I'm showing there. You know, you use the tag v3, you got the uh, v3 of the um, Java build pack in this case, instead of using its master, right? So um, another, build, uh, another best practice that you, you probably want to follow. Next, of course, is that uh, your application is picked up by the wrong build pack. Right? Remember, if you don't specify the build pack, you will, the Cloud Foundry will do the detect thing. And there are sometimes, you know, another uh, aggressive build pack may grab your application and say, okay, I, I want to stage this, but you don't want to use that build pack. So in that case, uh, of course, you can override that through the B option. Uh, but really, I think you, there's something to fix. Either the build pack is too aggressive, we need to, you need to fix that, or your application contains some you know, suspicious files that are another build pack is interested in. So fix that um, as, as, a, as a root course. Last one is very tricky again, and this is a real problem that some users encountered and reported on our Stack Overflow. So what happens here is that you know, when DA invokes or the build pack code, detect, compile, and release, or Imagine what happens if the script does not have the execute bit set in the file attributes. The compile will fail, of course. And again, you, you do not get any helpful messages from, from the output. It just say, cloning the build pack, then silently, compilation failed. Um, so make sure that you are setting the execu execution bit uh, to your th three scripts in the build pack especially when you are cloning, you know, uh, you are forking a build pack and then re-push it from your Windows machine to a remote repository, you may lose that bit in those three scripts and you need to set them explicitly. All right, so that's compilation errors. 
And the last big error is startup errors. This is where you know the droplet is already created. You see that message, right? Uploading droplet. So so far so good. And then the DAs are provisioned to actually start your application. And then you start to see this, you know, endless messages starting, stopped, starting, stopped. And essentially it tells you application start unsuccessful or timeout. Um, and you, if you query the application status, it may report crashing or starting. It just cannot stand up. So how to diagnose this? Again, uh, log as your friend. Uh, you can do these two things again to see the messages that spit it out in the log. So the possible causes, number one is, again, uh, you are taking too long to start. Uh, there's, the limit is, again, 180 seconds. So if your application cannot start within this limit, uh, you are going to fail. So if it's not really enough, what to do? Uh, root cause one is that you are doing too much initialization in your application code. Like, for example, you are reading lots of data to initialize your application. So try not to do that, right? Or you can do lazy initialization, or you can do asynchronous initialization. Um, the other option is that you can start your application with the no route option. That way, the DEA will just kick off your application process, and then if it starts, it will report back to the health manager saying, okay, it started, right? It will not or try to ping the port of your application. So then you can wait for your application to complete its initialization uh, and then map route to actually bind it to the uh, URL. So that's one thing that you can do. Our second root cause um, is when you are listening on the wrong port, right? So the application actually started and everything goes well, but it's just not listening on the port that the DA expected it to listen. So make sure that you are using that environment variable and use that port to open your application HTTP listener. Um, th third root course is when your application during start try to reach out to some external dependencies and because some reasons it's going really slow. So make sure that the connection is good um, and the security group setting could also impact that. So course number two are, is the application actually failed to start and exit. Or applications in Cloud Foundry should never exit by itself, right? So if you exit, the house manager will think, okay, you are die and I'm going to start you again. Um, so check your application logic. Don't exit on exceptions, right? Or sometimes it's probably just, you know, you are missing a service binding. So make sure your application has all the service bond when you get, get it started. Cause number three is consuming too much memory. So our like staging or your application container, when you do the push, you specify the memory limitation, right? And you cannot exceed that. If you do, again, you get killed suddenly and silently. So make sure you have enough memory to run your application. Uh, disk, or same situation as staging, right? There is a default which is two gig, or uh, yeah, which is two or uh, one, sorry, two gigabytes, right? So if you go beyond that, or uh, the cloud provider may not allow you to do that, or uh, so you need to think about, you know. Maybe you should use an external storage, right? A blob service or storage service to, uh, to store additional things instead of writing to your local disk. Uh, that's not a, that's an anti-pattern in, in the, you know, twelve-factor application anyway. Um, so, um, these are some advanced diagnosis techniques that you might use in addition to what I showed already. Um, first is that you know. When your application keep get killed, and you have no way to find what's going on, right? And you really want to get into the container to examine the files there, you know, see whether there are some crash or dump files, etc. So the trick, one trick you can do is, uh, if the runtime has a way to run a hook when it exit, you can do that. So for example, with the IBM JDK, there's an option called dump tool that you can use to specify a script to run when it exit, 
right? So when the JVM exit, it will invoke that script. So in this case, the script is sleep for one day. So that means, you know, if during the midnight the application got killed, um, it will stay for one day. So the next morning you wake up, you you go to your application and there, see it's not working, but its body is still there. You can use CF files to look into all the you know files still there um, in the container, right? Um, and uh, to make it more useful, if you combine it with the dump uh, tool, so it will generate the dump, memory dump, heap dump, thread dump, then you can download those dumps and do more analysis. If the runtime does not th have those hooks, another trick that you can do with all the runtimes, all the build packs, is that you can override the startup command and append that magic command, sleep one day again, right? You can find the normal command by you know, push a simple application, make sure it, it uh, gets uh, successfully started. You will see the actual start command in the, uh, in the uh, CF command line output, right? Copy that command, append that sleep one day thing, and then push it with no route or with your application in problem. And then that application will get pushed successfully, and it will stay for one day for you to examine what's going on there, right? And of course, after you, after you are done, you can stop it. So that's the, a general trick that you can do um, with crashing applications. The other technique is to run an agent inside your application container as a main process so that the house manager will not kill your application, right? Because the agent process will be alive. And then you can, you know, with the container, container you can use tools like the CFSSH command to SSH into your container and then start your application there and you know, work with it interactively to find out what's going on. Um, in Bluemix, we also introduced an interesting feature called um, development mode uh, with which uh, we also have an agent built in and you can do our things like remote debugging and also do the, you know, the SSH or alike experience. You can have a console window to work with. So those, those advanced techniques will also help you to diagnose our application startup problems. Final tip uh, is that when you, you know, keep pushing applications several times, sometimes some weird things will get cached and the build pack probably is, you know, messed things up. So one of the practice that, you know, just delete the whole application and start over. That will clean all the cache and you'll get a fresh start. So sometimes it's a good tip to, to have. All right, so as a summary, so I think in today I quickly walked through you all these four types of errors. Um, hopefully that's a, a complete coverage you know, of many of the common errors that you may encounter in Cloud Foundry um, and um, the techniques that you can use to diagnose all these and the options that you have to solve them. So with that, I think I probably still have uh, two minutes, probably for one question. Yes, please. Uh, development mode, is that a Cloud Foundry function or is it uh, proprietary to Bluemix? Uh, right now, it's, it's kind of a uh, property to Bluemix, or it's part of the Liberty build pack and Node.js build pack in Bluemix. Okay. Since this is short, are there any other questions before we close? Um, if no, uh, thanks for coming, and I hope you enjoy this. Thank you.